Lab I'ma jump in it like this. I don't party with the kids. I get lit and I sit at the crib. You my baby, no bill. What's up, party people? It's your host, Stone RG, back with another episode of Trash Talk. But before we jump into it, I just gotta. My mic is on. I know it's on because the light is green, but apparently you guys aren't hearing me because a month ago when I dropped my episode saying that the LA Clippers are trash, I got some backlash. Australia, you don't know what you're talking about. They're a good team. They just, they just need a few more seasons, just a few more pieces. No, Steezy taught you. Obviously, based off the news that is released today, since Chris Paul is going to the Houston Rockets, it's clear that whatever they were trying to do isn't going to work. And that's just because they had no identity for the roster. At the end of that episode, I said that Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, and Doc Rivers would all be off the team within the next two years. I'm 33% of the way there. Steezy taught you. And that's just because as far as Doc Rivers is concerned, he did a terrible job of setting up an identity for this team. They wanted to run fast pace like the Golden State Warriors, but did not have the correct roster, and they didn't want to play D. As much as you want to talk about how the Golden State Warriors shoot threes, they play D. And the best teams in this league play D, i.e. Golden State Warriors, San Antonio Spurs, and the Cleveland Cavaliers in the playoffs. They do play D. They had a bunch of guards, Austin Rivers, Jamal Crawford, and J.J. Reddick. Love to shoot the three ball, don't play D. Then you have Chris Paul who wants to pound the ball for 10 to 15 seconds to hopefully pass to an open shot. As for the Los Angeles Clippers, they have DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin who cannot consistently hit a shot outside of eight feet of the rim. So you're not spreading the floor there. And neither one of them, well, mainly DeAndre Jordan, can't knock down a free throw to save his life. So that's easy bait. You can't play him in the last two minutes of a game because God forbid he gets fouled. Well, those are lost points, easy points that you should be able to convert. So I digress. As far as the trade, I feel like Chris Paul landed on the wrong Texas team. Should have went to San Antonio. With Tony Parker getting older, I think he would have fit well into that system with Kawhi Leonard, Pau Gasol, LaMarcus Aldridge. They might consider, should probably consider getting rid of him, but nonetheless. Now, the Los Angeles Clippers, they did get back Lou Williams, Sam Decker, Patrick Beverly. Pretty good players, all role players. They should try to pick up another point guard before the season starts just to have that starting point guard role solidified with somebody that can distribute. I don't really know what their identity is going to be this coming season, but like I've said continuously and will continue to say they are trash. I taught you, hopefully you listen to me now. Okay, so now as far as that Chris Paul trade, that has solidified this theory that I've had going on. And that is that the Golden State Warriors have a huge target on their back. Now that is normal for the reigning defending champion to have a target on their back. But as far as the Golden State Warriors, it is huge. You can see it from across the country. Every team wants to take down this team because they are based off the record, the best team in NBA history, setting the 73 and nine regular season record just a few years ago. And the fact that they have not one, but two MVPs, one third of the Western Conference All-Stars roster on their team, you just have people gunning for them. Because think about that. If you take down this team, you take down the Golden State Warriors, your name will go down in history. You will be talked about for years to come, all right? We see it just when any player is lucky enough to get a block or a dunk on LeBron James. That's a Sports Center top 10 highlight of your career. But if you take down the Golden State Warriors, you just solidified yourself in the Hall of Fame, most likely, because you obviously had to play out of your mind to beat that team. Just answer yourself this question real quick. How many kids do you know graduate from high school, 19 to a year at college, are suddenly leading billion dollar corporations? Not too many, right? And that's exactly what you're asking these NBA players to do once they get drafted after one year at college. Because these organizations, associations worth billions, hundreds of millions of dollars, you're asking them to lead this culture, this identity, this frontier, take players that are sometimes 10 years older than them and command them what to do on the court? That's not realistic. You need the coach, you need the GM, you need the, the new players, you need the old players, all to be synchronized, working in harmony. The Lakers have basically just put themselves in the same position that they did now two years ago. So you spent the second overall pick to get a 19 year old who has now created all this hype about himself, has a huge target on his back, you're expecting him to lead the frontier, lead this team to the promised land. 
Well, I will say now that the Lakers at least have put themselves in a position where they have the ability to hopefully sign two max contracts next year. That possibly being Paul George and Russell Westbrook, which are both formerly residents of the Southern California area. Now that team, Lonzo Ball, Russell Westbrook, Paul George, with Brooke Lopez, Larry Nance, Brandon Ingram, Jordan Clarkson, that's not a bad team. That's a team that I think could win a few games possibly get themselves an eighth to seventh seed in the playoff. But until you get those max contract superstars, you're basically looking at best case scenario, 20 to 30 wins realistically. Come on Magic Johnson, to tell Lonzo Ball, don't break too many of my records and hopefully we'll see your jersey hanging from the Raptors before he's even played a summer league game? Bruh, what are they giving you? You're smoking crack, that is ridiculous. It makes no sense. But nonetheless, I am intrigued to see what he's capable of doing. I will be attending this NBA Summer League, so hopefully I get to see him play in person and really see if he is the real deal and has the potential to be another superstar in the league in the next few years. Now thank you folks for tuning in for another episode of Trash Talk. Let me know what you're thinking. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to show this video to the people you love, the people you hate, your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, and always remember. Please, really, really pay attention. Always remember, Steezy taught you. Yeah.